We'll talk some Drew Brees in a second, but first, Nationals, Giants, Kurt Suzuki hitting the line drive to left center. Oh, Kevin Pillar laying out to make a great catch. And I wonder if he's going to be a gold glover this year. I feel like he's been in butt first a bunch, Ooh. covering a ton of ground in center field for the Giants. That's a heck of a play, man. All right, moving on. This is the Atlanta Entertainment Basketball League. This, this is high school it. class of 2020, this and this is shooting guard Jimmy Gatwich picking up Quinn I mean, Cook's pockets before hitting the 360. I, this kid, he's got a highlight reel in high school like Zion, just without the enormous bulk and weight to him. He he keeps inventing dunks in games. We saw him do the beneath both legs dunk a couple weeks ago. See, that was this kid. This was what the 360 between the legs. This Reverse. I, I thought last week that was the best in-game dunk we've seen. He did that with so much ease. Ease. <laughs> Comes around playing some defense, picks the guy's pocket. Yeah. I like that. All right, Cowboys practice. This is for you, CC. Jason Witten. How did this man? Reaching for me? back to complete on, the one-handed grab. That ain't one hand. He brought the other hand How in did there. How this make the show? This is rude to Jason Witten. This is rude to him that we say this is an amazing nice catch. This is like showing the hundred-year-olds who run the, is not, run the that is hundred not meter in a minute forty. Don't, don't be shading on Jason Witten like that. One of the problems Cowboys had was red zone. So right here, that's a touchdown in the red zone, Bill, to help them out. If he can do that during the regular season. There you go. See. Yeah. Way to put some shine on it. All right, let's talk about the Saints. On his bald head. Is he got here now? I don't know. Despite heartbreaking losses to end their last two seasons, the Saints are still tied with the Patriots and the Rams for the NFL's best record during that span. This year, a resilient Drew Brees will be playing his 19th season and said, quote, I think I have the ability to be as good as I have ever been. Chris, how, how, how has Drew Brees been able to just be as good at this age? It, you can, let's just remove the name. Okay. Why is Tom Brady so effective this late in his career? Why is Ben Roethlisberger so effective late in his career? Over 5,000 yards. Phillip Rivers. Number one, the game's easier. The game's easier to play. You can't put the physical pounding on the quarterback that you used to be able to, so they've protected the quarterback more. The rules as far as pass interference, illegal contact, all those things, they lead to the quarterback. The no huddle, having the mic in your helmet, that gives the quarterback a huge amount of information pre-snap. So right now, everything is led to the quarterback being very, very successful. When you can't hit them, they know you, you can't hit them, you can't hit them high, the quarterbacks can sit in the pocket and become more comfortable. I would say at this point, 2019, more quarterbacks are trying to play longer, and you understand the game. The game starts to slow down. It's just as if you have the answers to the test. Tom Brady said that a couple of years ago in an interview. Drew Brees said that in an interview recently. So you know Ben Roethlisberger. He continues to play at a high level. The game's a lot easier. The requirements in the offseason are not as strenuous. There's less time on the field. But for the quarterbacks, this NFL game, is the friendliest that it's ever been. So Drew Brees takes care of his body. He loves playing the game. He's been in the same system for a long time there with Sean Payton. So you can see he feels like this will be his best season the way last season was, which he played, especially for the first 12 weeks, at an incredible high level. And so that's in kind of the general reason that a lot of quarterbacks are playing so much longer than we'd expected at a higher level than we would have expected. For Drew Brees specifically, I thought an article we were talking about this morning by Albert Breer in the MMQB was really insightful about famed quarterback coach, or is it even mechanics coach? I don't know what his title is, Tom House. I was just, let's just say... Let's just say throwing coach, because Throw he works with baseball pitchers. Okay, throwing coach, that he would, that he will talk with Drew Brees regularly, and if he misses a pass, he will quiz Drew about what did you do wrong there? And it's about, uh, you know, elbow in, elbow out, the different types mechanics. of different mechanical issues that he could be having. And I find it really fascinating that even at this age, this season, to see these guys, Tom's doing it, Drew's doing it. You said before the show, Peyton almost got it started doing yeah, it. Yeah, if you would equate every quarterback to a golfer, 
then you wouldn't be surprised. You're totally right. Because golfers are always reworking. Analyze any, every swing. Every swing, for any, no matter how long they play. It's a really good analogy that I had never thought of until you just mentioned it. That because I, maybe in my head, and I think a lot of people's head, you think that once you get, unless you're reworking your throwing motion like Cam Newton, once you have a throwing motion as good as Drew Brees' is, what you always talk about, over the top, where it, his height doesn't hurt him, that it's just a repeatable motion, and that if he has one get away from him, he knows instantly what it is just get back to it but working with someone on a day-to-day -day basis trying to either improve tweak whatever I'm certain that has contributed it's almost a different version of sports science to his success because he's not the athlete he once was not that he was ever a superstar athlete I'm sure he doesn't have quite the arm strength he once did not that he ever had the strongest arm in the I would be careful you disagree with that working with Coach House and a number of other guys, Tom Brady, we saw this summer, yep. he measured his ball velocity. It was faster than when he came in. So yes, these guys, Drew Brees, his arm is as strong or stronger than it was at Purdue. And we're starting to see minor gains, but doing it for a long period of time. So even if it's a minor gain, but I've been doing it for 15 right. years, it adds a lot to a quarterback. And then when you add the mechanics to his accuracy, to his ability to see the field, to his decision making, a lot of that comes, like you said, with being in the league a long time, with knowing what defenses are going to give you. But do you think that the team that's surrounding him right now could be the best team he's had in his career right now? I, I think they have a chance to be special. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, they have... Over the last 10 years, they've had a number of offenses that would go down NFL history yep. as special offenses. And Drew Brees has put together, like Peyton Manning, some of the most historic seasons. But I do believe because of the lack in the last two years of tight end productivity. So they go out and get Jarrett Cook in free agency. Last two years, Saints tight ends have been one of the least productive we've seen in the NFL. Second fewest targets, only 150 in two years. We're talking about Drew Brees now. So they basically playing with three receivers. The tight end has only been a blocker. Their tight ends are the fifth fewest receptions, only 108 receptions over the last two years, and fewest, fourth fewest yards in 1,200, a little more than 1,200 yards. So you add Jared Cook to a Michael Thomas, who I feel very comfortable with, Alvin Kamara coming out of the backfield, playing more first and second down compared to just being a third down back. And I believe something you're going to see in the NFL, and I believe the Saints are going to be one of the teams guilty of it. Around the NFL, teams are not trying to play the fullback more. We saw New England get back to a fullback-centric offense. We're going to see not the fullback, but you're going to see more two tight ends in this NFL season. The Saints and Sean Payton, you can see them with Jared Cook and a number of other tight ends they have on the roster. So for me, that would be a vast improvement. Help them to be more physical at the point of attack and get those wide receivers, um, get those tight ends out in routes. You asked if this is the, could be the best team he's been on. Look, the, the best team he's ever been on is the one that won the Super Bowl. I'm not saying that just because they won the Super Bowl. That was the number one offense, and this is really surprising for the Saints, a number four defense. Yep. They, they added extraordinary players on both sides of the ball. Remember, a young Malcolm Jenkins, mm -hmm. who's now with Philadelphia, was one of the safeties on that team. They had really Really good talent on both sides when they missed the playoffs four out of five years going seven and nine every single year each of those four years the seven and nine years from 2012 2016 they had either the worst or second worst ranked defense in football the last couple years when they have had tied for the second most wins or tied for the most wins in the NFL they've had a league average defense to go along with as Chris said always a great offense with Drew Brees even though the offense changed a bit with Ingram and Kamara being a more run centric offense I do think this Saints team has an argument that it is the most complete team in the NFL. And we have seen in that dome with that coach and that quarterback, if they have a top 15 defense, they're in the game for a Super Bowl. If they have a top 10 defense, they can become Super Bowl favorites. If they get enough pass rushers off the edge, they've spent a big investment on their secondary as far as being able to play nickel, having three competent mm -hmm. corners. Pass rushers plus that corner play, if they can force some turnovers and play well in a very tough division, I trust the offense as much as any offense in the NFC. All right, you mentioned the defense, you mentioned the tight ends. No one's worried about Ingram not being there. Does that not, is, is no one factoring that in? I think that's the reason why from a formation standpoint, Kamar carried the bar a lot more, more touches, 74 more touches in year number two. That progression, he's always been a specialty back. He's a little undersized, slightly built. I don't want to see him carry the ball 300 times. So I believe also Latavius Murray comes over as a free agent, a big back from Minnesota, should be 
Julio to assume some of that pounding. So watch how many times he touches the ball. Can he be as efficient as an undersized running back when you bump up those touches? But I believe from a scheme standpoint, they're going to try to duplicate what they did the first 11 weeks of the season. Drew Brees, first 11 weeks, best QBR in the NFL, struggled. In the, from week 12 through the playoffs, he was around the middle of the pack, I think around 12th ranked quarterback. So trying to continue what they got off to the, a blazing start last season. All right, let's take a break. Coming up, talk some Cowboys. How will Zeke's holdout impact Dak Prescott on the field? That's next on First Things First.